Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic for some more Sudoku tomfoolery. Um, and today we're going to be doing a puzzle from Lucy Audrin, who has, um, she's planning a book, I believe, uh, including a um, hundred of her own hand-designed puzzles, uh, 15 of which have not been seen before, except for this one, which now has been seen because she sent it to us to allow us to do it. I will publish um, under the video at least her website details so you can uh, get in touch with her and find out about the book um, if you're interested in this. And I think it's called Lucy Doku, the name, the working title for the book anyway. Um, and we have featured Lucy a few times on the channel before, very interesting puzzle designer. So this is going to be interesting. Now, before we do that, I do want to congratulate another group of people who have done um, a great job by finishing the new Seven Wonders of the World Sudoku Hunt. So very well done to these uh, 12 or 13 names or pairs. Um, one of them I'm particularly pleased for as this was his fourth go at getting the key word out of the puzzles. So he'd clearly done all the puzzles, but he didn't know quite how to extract the final word. And he's finally got there, so congratulations. He knows who he is. Um, anyway, very good work. And do have a look at Patreon. There's so much good content there. That Sudoku hunt is there. It's still proving incredibly popular. As you can see, we've had this many solvers every day it's existed and many more on the first few days. Uh, loads of compliments about the puzzles being set at the right level. Talking of which, we have a more difficult hunt coming out later, although might have run into a problem on testing, we'll see. Um, I'm not too sure what's happening there. Now, that said, there are also other things on Patreon, videos and the like. And of course, there are our apps if you want more Sudoku to do and if you want to brush up on your techniques. Now, what of Lucy's puzzle. This is called bees. Um, bees exclamation mark. I'm not sure actually whether we're looking at a swarm of bees. That might be what boxes seven and nine suggest or staring into the face of one individual bee with its mandibles and ocelli and I don't remember all the terms from biology class. Um, but what I do notice as a Sudoku solver about this puzzle is an absolutely fascinating mirror symmetry uh, reflecting across this central vertical. So it's entirely symmetrical across that vertical, almost. Now it couldn't be entirely symmetrical across that vertical because with its standard thermo crop key um, and normal Sudoku rules, it would definitely have two possible solutions because you could flip it over. But here is one dot that stops it being fully symmetrical. So I'm really interested to see how that's going to play out. Um, and I'm very keen to give it a go. So as I say, normal Sudoku rules apply. Thermos um, mean that the numbers must increase along the thermo from the bulb to the end. Down here from the bulb to each of six ends, the numbers must increase. And on the black dots, there are ratios of one to two in the two numbers. They're displayed. Um, not all black dots are given. There's no negative constraint. So do give it a go on the link under the video. I'm going to try now. Let's get cracking. Um, OK, I'm going to do the classic good lift thing, which Simon would be, especially on this puzzle, I think, would be appalled about. He would be just looking for something interesting that you could find given where the thermos and the Kropke dots are placed and instead I'm filling in all the candidates on the longer thermos to see if it's going to tell me anything. Um, well this can't be a five for a start because it's on a Kropke dot so that means this can't be a four. So already this disambiguating dot as I like to think of it is coming into play. Now what is next to that on the Kropke dot? Well the 4 would allow 8 or 2, but we can't have 8, so it could be 2. The 3 only allows 6. The 2 theoretically allows 4 or 1, but it can't actually be 1, because if that was a 2 and that was a 1, you'd also need a 1 here for the thermo, and that wouldn't work. So this has come down to 3 of the even numbers. 
I don't know how to make... Oh, yes, I do. Look, that gives us a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 quintuple in the row. Good Lord. So, 1, 7, 8, and 9 still to place in the row. Now, this can't be a 9. It could easily be a 1, and it could just be a 7 with 8 and 9 on its um, the tips of its antennae. I don't know. Anyway. Um, now, what else can we get? Not much from these ones, I don't think. I might be missing something. But these are quite interesting. This is obviously a smaller number than appears in all of the ends of the thermo. So it can never be higher than three, I reckon, because there are six higher ends. So three is the maximum number there with four to nine in the ends. Now it's on a Kropke dot in both cases. Um, two, four or six, doubling them, or the two could divide and give a one, I reckon. What does that mean? Oh, this is very interesting. Look at this. There are four of the numbers five, six, seven, eight, nine in row six. They're not that hard to see. It's all we've got in row six. And that means that, what are the ends here? And it gets quite interesting. Now, one of them could be one of the numbers five to nine. And that, though, is going to form a triple. Now, it's not very interesting to be one of the numbers five, six, seven, or nine. Um, because that doesn't restrict this thermo dot. But the other one, whichever one is 5 to 9, you've now used 5 to 9 completely in the row. And that's going to mean that the other end of this, whichever side it is, can't be higher than 4. So there's got to be either a 4 or a 3 on there. There's got to be either a 3 or a 2 here. And this bulb has to be either one or two, which is fascinating. Now that forms a triple in row eight with these two B um, bulbs. Okay, so one of them is going to be a three. Okay, I'm going to pencil mark that. I don't like doing corner marks across boxes, but I'm going to do it this time. There is a 3 in one of those two cells. That means there is a 6 in one of these two. What does that mean? Yes, I'll tell you what else it means. It means that in whichever of these boxes does have a 3 here, where do 2 and 1 go? They're going to have to go in the bottom white cells, the non-thermo cells. So there's either a 1-2 pair there, or a 1-2 pair there which is a really weird relationship. Um, and I don't know how to pencil mark it. I'm just, I'm gonna color those to try and remember the fact that one set of them contains a one and two. Now, ah, yes, that's very interesting. For the other bulb, that's not a three. Now it can't be a two because the one in its box would then have to be in this row clashing with the other one and two. So one of these is a one, and one of them is a three. That's fascinating. So this pair is now a two-six pair. Okay, now I'm going to take out those corner marks, which might be confusing. Now I've got a one-three pair, and I can get my first number in the grid, which is peculiarly a two down there. So one of these is a four. One of these is a three. They're easy to pencil mark, because they are in the same box. And the other one is five, six, seven, or eight, or nine. So the other three white cells in this row are one, two, and three. Oh, that's so peculiar. I really like the way this, this works. The whole symmetry thing is fascinating. Now, this can't be a two anymore. Now, we're getting a bit pressured for one, two, three, and four. Oh, that could be a six, allowing one of these to be a one. Here we're going to have four, 
and ah, oh, we're going to have four in one of those. So that's not a four. I think this can't be a two anymore. And that works its way up the line. That can't be three, that can't be four, that can't be five, that can't be six. So we are getting a bit of a difference in the symmetry now. Um, now, what numbers are going to be on the ends of these thermos? Oh, where's five in the box? There doesn't seem to be anywhere for five to go. So this is a four, five pair. Actually, I've just noticed that can't be a four. So actually, is this restoring the symmetry? No, it doesn't do anything right. But that is now a four, five pair. So four, five pair, they're really weird. I just, I don't know, wasn't expecting this. That can't be six. Now this is a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple, which would have been more helpful at the start. I mean, I guess we've forced that by getting five in here. Ah, these have to be a three, four pair now to be less than four and five respectively. So there's always going to be a four in one of those, in, each, in both of those pairs. One of them is five, four, and the other is four, three. Now we've got a one, two, three triple in the central box. Oh, this becomes a seven. This is a six. We're getting loads now. There's an eight, nine pair on the end of that seven. This six connects by the crop key dot, the disambiguating crop key dot to a three. That can't be three. These can't be three. That pushes up along taking, ooh, what's happened there? Oh no, that degree of freedom hasn't gone. That went with the five, okay. Doesn't do much. But six and seven have now appeared in this row as well. And that is gonna have an impact all along the line. This in fact is a nine, because it can't be one which is in a triple or seven now. This is one or eight, and this is one or eight. They're a pair reaching across the central mirror axis. Um, two must be in one of these two cells. Ah, the fact that six is definitely in one of these cells means that on one of these um, eyes, if that's what they are, it goes six, five, four, but I don't know which side. But whichever side it is, is the side where we have two, one down here, because that we couldn't have six. So we're kind of forming a picture of both sides. So on one side we have one, two, six, five, four. Um, and on the other side we have a three, six, with a two, one there. That must be five now, I think. Yeah, because four has gone up here. Oh, this is the only place for two in the row. I've just seen that, sorry. That can't be a six. Oh, that makes this a one. That's three, that's two. Ah, oh, that's very interesting, okay. Um, the nine has sorted out the eight, nine pair. Sorry, I'm getting these gradually. It's, it's not easy to pick up everything that you will be seeing immediately. Because uh, there's quite a lot of things to look at in this puzzle. Eight is in one of those. Nine is in one of those. Two is in one of those. Be very restricted if it's there. Um, ah, now, there's a one in one of those. And a one, two in one side or the other. Now what that means, I think, is that none of these cells can be a 1. It must do, yeah, and so therefore we can put a 1 in here. That's a 9. This is a 4, 5, 6 triple. We get a 1 in one of these two cells and it can't be there because of the thermo, so we can place that. 2, 3, 7 are remaining up here. Now, I do immediately note that can't be 2 and 3 at the top because you would need one on both thermo bulbs, and that would clash. So one of those is a seven. That's not a seven. Oh, that's not a two. We know that from earlier. So that could, one of these has to be low. So it could be that being a three with a one or a two there. And if it's that side, that's a one, because it can't be a two. But I don't know which side is which. Um, oh. Weird. Now, 
three is definitely in one of those pairs and it's also up there somewhere that's not actually very helpful one two nine three four so we've got five six seven and eight to place down here and we've got an eight and a six higher up in the columns now i should maybe focus on these oh look that can't be a three so we've got a one two pair there a one eight pair there are these not resolvable maybe they are maybe i'm missing something um, I just don't know. Uh, maybe I can work these out now. Ah, wherever 1, 2 goes, it's going to form a 1, 2 pair up this side, which will put 8 there. So, that's even more information. Wherever we have 3, 6, we're going to have 8. Oh, this is a five there. Ah, so the four will go with a one beside it because of that. Because wherever we have the three, six, on the other side we have six, five, four. And this same side we have a one, two pair and an eight. So four goes next to the one. I don't know if I can use that in any way. Maybe one of these pairs is impossible to have the one, two inside, but there's not so little difference between the sides at the moment. The symmetry really is maintaining itself quite viciously. Now, what about these dots? They can't contain an eight. So, one of them involves a two, and the other one is a three, six pair. And whichever is the three, six pair is in the side that doesn't have three, six here, stopping it. Ah, and the other side, we have one, two here. So it would have to be a four or a three, six on the inside cell and a two or a three, six on the outside one. Is that helping? It, oh, I was going to say it can't be a two. But it's going to have to be a two on the outside and that's going to form a one, two pair as well. Now, what does that, and that means something for the order of one, two down here. If that's whichever side the one, two is over here, where there's a three and a six there, and a five and an eight here, then it's the three, six pair up there. So on the other side, this is a two, and that's a one. No, that doesn't. I can't see how that gives me anything to fill in. I'm sorry, I'm stumbling around here. Now, one of those is a three. Ah, oh, no, not, no, actually, I know where the three goes because you either have three, six here, and that can't be a three, or you have one, two here. Oh, no, that could be a six. Ah. Oh. Okay, I've got a two, three, four, five, six quintuple. So one and seven go in those cells. Oh, ones are really being forced crazy all over the place. Ah, oh, oh, hang on. Does this mean whichever one of these is a one, there has to be a one here. There has to be a one here. And then, yes. Yes, yes, that is it. There is short, yeah, that one is proving that there's no other one in the central row. There is a one in both of those uh, columns. There's definitely an X-wing on ones there. That means that these outsides are never ones. They are, there's a two in one of them and a one in its partner, which is, what that is telling me is that there's then an X-wing on ones in columns three and seven, and these cells can therefore never be ones. That is amazing. Um, that is really helpful though, because it means that whichever one is the bulb under the low number is a two below a three. And obviously given that two, this isn't it. So we can put in two and three there. This is where the seven goes now. We don't know what it's low number is. We do know it's not a 1 because of that X-wing. So it's 4, 5 or 6. This is now 2. 
Oh, this is so weird. Oh, that's a two, three, four, six quadruple. So I shouldn't have really been noticing the quintuple. Um, now, does that two... I don't see that it does resolve things. It doesn't... Oh, I was sure that when I got that, it was going to sort out all these ones and twos and which side was which. And I'm not sure that it does now, after all that. Um, right, let's have another little thing. If that was three, six, we get a four there, two there. Ah, oh, yes. So if that was three, six, we get four there and two, yes, sorry, that two has sorted it out. It's made that the three, six pair. That stops this being three, six. So that's two, one. We can delete everything we've done in those cells because we now know the one, two pair is over here. One, two with a three in the B bulb and a six there. Now the four, the six in row six, effectively, has to be here because that six stops it being here. Um, and then we know that this is where it goes six, five. That's, yeah, this has to go six, five, four because of the thermo. I'm just checking my logic as we go. Now, the three, six there means that's a four with a two there. That makes this a one and this an eight. That makes this a one and this a two. Yeah, the twos are all working. The, that one has sorted out the seven, one part of that X wing. Oh, this is a brilliant puzzle. I mean, this is really good. That eight, wow, that makes this seven, nine on the end there. This is six. That's an eight. We've got a seven, nine pair there, three and four. Now something has gone wrong with that. That's hideous. This can't be three or four. Oh, I said it had to be two, four that way around, and that must have been a wrong conclusion. Now, I don't think that invalidates any of the other conclusions that I've done. So I apologize for that. No, I've got a problem. Oh, that's a two. I wrote a three by mistake. I typed the wrong digit. But it's still right. This is four and that's two. Right, I'm sorry, I'm going to be careful. I'm going to unwind to where I made that decision because if that was wrong, and it clearly was, I'm going to, I, I just don't want to make a mistake based on that. I'm really sorry, guys. Um, bear with me now. Now, there we go. We had one, two, three, four, six in every cell. And I concluded that on the outside, we were going to get two and one, and that couldn't be a two. But that only applied, that didn't actually apply to the row in which, yeah, that's interesting. That is interesting. Can, could I take one out of these? Could this ever be, ah, this would be one, two on one side. And on the other side, you would have a one, two pair there. So you can never get a one, Ah, but maybe... Oh, and you've got the X-Wings as well. Could you ever get a 1 on the side that didn't have 1, 2? No, because you'd have a 2. Okay, it's a, it's a bit more complicated than I realised at this point. So let's go through this carefully. I'm very sorry about this, but this matters. Um, and I might even have been on the wrong trail before. So... One side, we have a two, one pair. The other side, we have one, two there. Now, I don't know which side is which. Whichever side we have the one, two there, we have a one, two pair in the final column. And that can never be one or two. One or two. And that means it can't be a one, two dot here. And also over here, we can't have a one, two dot because we've got a two, one pair there. So this can, these can never be one, two dots. And the only conclusion I was allowed to make at this point was taking one, oh, taking one out of these four cells. And that's what I should have done. 
right then i can get back on this horse of working out that we do that does still give me a two three four five six quintuple uh, in fact that's a five which is what i should have spotted the first time these are a one seven pair they are forming an x-wing because we have to have a two on the outside or is that still true yes these are an x-wing so you can never have a one in the bottom corner Nobody puts one in the corner in this puzzle. So there is a two on the outside forming a two-one pair in one of the outsides. And on the other side, there's a two-one pair here. So the one has to be in the middle. That's the point. And forms an X-wing with that one, seven. These bulbs can never have a one. That's still a good conclusion. One of them has to have a two because one of these has to be a little number. That has to be over this side with the three next to it. Right, so it's all good from there. And hopefully I can recapitulate what I was just doing. That is four, five, or six. The one X-wing still applies. That two now sorts out, yes, that sorts out that this can't be the two, four pair. That three, six pair means this is not the three, six pair down here. We get three there, six there. This time I'm going to avoid the typing error I made as well last time. Also going to delete the colors because I don't need them anymore. And the one from that pencil mark. Right, that two has given us a one here, eight here, one here, two here. Wow, that was complicated. This is very clever. Uh, this is now a two, four pair. And we know which way around it is. And I'm going to get it the right way around this time. Four, two, which is a relief because now this does... Hang on, that six puts six in row six. Then we get the five, four on that thermo. That gives us a five here. Uh, this has become a seven, nine, six there. Now we've got to fill in three, four here, and we can do it without a clash. <sighs> Thank goodness for that. Right, we've got one, eight, and that's a naked single eight. Nine and one can go in up there. That's the seven. That's the one. Um, this can't be four anymore. It's getting narrowed down. We've got seven and nine to go in as a pair there. Four and five that side. That makes this a six on the bulb. This is five and three. That six has freed up four and six there. Nine and eight to go in there. I don't know the order of those, but I do know how the three, six go now. Four, five, and seven as a triple there. And finally, on the home straight, seven and nine there. This is an eight. The four and three have been resolved there. So this has to become a five, four there. Uh, we can do this seven, eight pair, thanks to the eight in the bottom row. Can't do this five, six pair yet. Oh, this was such, this is such a clever puzzle. Really good. Right, that five, four pair is resolved now. Uh, that is seven or nine, so the eight in the row must be there. That fixes the nine, eight at the top. Still giving up its secrets gradually. This is a naked single seven. Nine and seven there. Nine, seven, nine. Um, yes, these are resolved. Four there, five there, seven there. We've got four and six to go in here. And we are finally finishing this puzzle, which has been absolute entertainment all the way through. Really enjoyed that. Uh, let's take out that color, which we don't need anymore, and hit the tick. Looks good to me. I really enjoyed that. That's such a clever puzzle. Bees indeed. Thank you so much to Lucy for sending it to us. As I say, her website is definitely linked below the video and well worth a look, I guess. So. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.